last several weeks, I've, I've remained stationary using the pulpit as a prop for my knee. Uh, and while it ain't well, God's blessed me with relief and healing and, uh, and, and I feel very thankful for that. Um, moving around behind the pulpit makes me a little nervous with that drop off right over there. I feel like if I fall, I can fall into the pew, so I'm okay here. But uh, anyways, I, I just uh, I wanted to share with you for a little bit. Uh, I know the last couple weeks I've, I've run way over and I intended to be short and y'all forgive me for that but uh, it's a great day to be in the house of the Lord today I uh, it's 30 <laughs> I uh, feel blessed for being here and um, you know thought about it last week and it just it just didn't feel like the right time but I, I wanted to share with you today a, a couple things may have been better last week but I thought last week went okay but uh, you know it's funny um, I've been doing this for 13 years a couple of breaks in between time and it, it, it's funny how I hear these preachers out there who, who, who go to a retreat and they plan their sermons for two years in advance. And they just lay it all out. And that's what they preach. You know, it's hard for me to get through two weeks. It, 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 and it's because God just changes things. Because And it just tells me that Obviously, what I'm thinking ain't what God's thinking. So I just I try to try to be fluid as I can, and uh, but I, I want to talk to you today. You know, you, you heard me read from Exodus 16, and, and, it, and it, the chapter starts out. You know, the, the title of it in my Bible is the quail and the manna. You know, the people were were grumbling because they were running out of stuff to eat. Their pots were empty. So God said, well, you know, I'll take care of that. We'll send you some man. And, and I read that part starting in verse 4. And then, and then I left out the part about the quail and, uh, and all that. And, and I fast forwarded it through that. And the, the important issue in that scripture to me it is, is not about the quail or the manna. But for me, the issue in this scripture is about our obedience to God. And, and when I think about that, I reflect back on the last few weeks. Actually, you know, maybe let's reflect back on, on this year, 2019. I can remember back in my younger days in high school, I graduated in 1981. You know, the year 2000 seemed like an eternity away. And then the 1990s came and we all thought, well, everything's going to end in 2000. You know, the Y2K thing, everything's going to stop, everything's going to quit. We had to, you know, so the year 2001 really seemed like a distant dream to me back in those days. But here we are. 38 years after I graduated from high school, we're in 2019, and here it is. Well, the world's a completely different place. You know, just this year, we had the 75th anniversary of D-Day. Of course, we talk about that a lot, you know, on Memorial Day, 4th of July, and, and then the exact anniversary of it, we think about that, and and, 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 you know, we talk about that. You hear me talk about it, how, you know, how the movie Saving Private Ryan br brought that day to life 
and all those soldiers who lost their lives that day on that beach. And, uh, and Saving Private Ryan has been on a lot lately, and I turned it on about 30 minutes into it. And it's all that, it's so realistic, all the people dying. You know, it, ju it just brings the fact, you know, my memory goes back to my dad landing on that beach. Getting out of that landing craft and, and going across it. Now, in full disclosure, my dad was not in the first wave. He was in the later wave, so it was, I don't think it, being on the beach wasn't nearly as dangerous for him as it was the first folks. But nonetheless, he said that you couldn't walk on sand. You had to walk on bodies. There were so many. And, you know, I see it on TV screen. He saw it in real life. So that brings back a lot of memories for me. Uh, another anniversary we had was the 50th anniversary of landing on the moon. I think I remember seeing it at school. I'm not really sure if I did or not. I may, I may remember seeing it on TV later on, but I think I saw it on TV. But still, I can remember being this. I remember that landing on the moon, that being in the, in, in the news. And, you know, there's a lot of things that we have in our memory. And, and I don't know if anybody knows this, but, but, I, but I learned this not too long ago, that, that our brain is such a powerful calculator. It's a computer. It's, it, it has unbelievable memory storage in our brain. Do you know that in our brain is every memory we have of every second of our life? At least from the moment of birth. We can remember that everything is in there, is in our brain. The only problem we have is we don't have the ability to unlock it. It's there. Now, you know how big I am. I'm here for everyone to see. When I was four years old, I weighed 100 pounds. I was chubby, but I was not just blubber and fat. I mean, I was a big kid. But think about this. I can remember vivid, just like I'm standing here today, I can remember riding down the road with my dad driving, standing up in the seat beside him and holding on to his ear in between my pinky and ring finger. That was my comfort. So I can remember that. How old was I? One and a half, two? Could have been much bigger than that because I remember when my head used to start hitting, hitting the roof in the car. Of course, you know, seat belts weren't a thing back then. But I can remember that. I can remember turning on the radio and hearing nothing but static. And I can remember pushing all the buttons. Static. I didn't realize to a teenager, until I was a teenager, that you had to turn the other knob to tune it and then pull the little buttons out and lock it in, and then it can preset your stations. So my whole youth, growing up until I was a teenager, we never played the radio in a car. Never heard a song in a car in my parents' car. I can remember all that. I'm sure we all have great stories. I've heard lots of them from a lot of you growing up. We all have great memories. But what I want to talk to you today is remembering what God has done for us. All throughout the Bible, He reminds the Jewish people of what He did for them. He brought them out of bondage in, in Israel and gave them a land that they didn't deserve, that they didn't earn. It was a gift from God. 
And you know, we go back three pages. I'm, I'm actually chapter 20, but I want to I go back to 16 for a second. Where I read verses 21 through 26, that is the first mention in the Bible of the Sabbath today. We, we celebrate the Sabbath. You folks celebrate on Saturday. Today is our Sabbath. But this is the first mention. It's, it, it's not the first mention of a day of rest. You remember where that is. It goes right back to the beginning of Genesis. God rested. But the idea of the Sabbath comes from Exodus 16. And you remember back the first part of it I read? He goes, by doing this, I'm going to test them to see if they will listen to my instructions. In other words, God was wanting to know if we could remember tomorrow what he taught us today. I don't know about you, but that's hard for me to do sometimes. But I want to fast forward four chapters and in, in, over in Exodus 20, starting in verse 8. And it says, 8 through 11, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son nor your daughter nor your manservant nor your maidservant nor your animals nor your alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. That's, ten, uh, that's number four of the ten commandments that God gave us. <clears throat> you know, this, this week was... A really emotional week for a lot of people, if not all Americans. I don't remember where I was with John Kennedy. I heard John Kennedy got killed because I was only 11 months old or maybe just a year. But I can tell you, I can, I can remember the exact spot I was standing when I heard Rick and Bubba say on the radio, well, golly, another plane just hit, hit the other tower. Because in the discussion, they were thinking it was just a little small plane that got lost and just ran into it. They, at the time, they didn't realize what, it, what had happened. So I walked in the Senior Activity Center in Gadsden, and we watched it on TV. I watched the first tower fall and the second tower fall, and my buddy Dominic, who I graduated with here, uh, lived just across the Hudson from Manhattan. And I called him, he answered, and he was at home, and, and, and I said, uh, uh, are you okay? And he said, yeah, I'm at home. And I said, well, go outside, look across the river, and you can see the smoke. I'll never forget that day. You know, there's a lot of things that are just seared in our memory. Think back to my wedding day. I can remember getting there. I can remember right, walking down the aisle. I can remember say, saying I do. I li remember listening to Jeff sing two songs. And the rest of the day was just a blur. That's 40. <laughs> the next thing I remember, we ordered a pizza and went to sleep, and I think we slept for three days. But you know, I think that we all tend to fall back into the trap uh, 
maybe this is too general a thing to say, but I, I think maybe we're all a little bit guilty of watering down the Sabbath and what it means. And, and before anybody says anything, I, 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 I understand I understand what Jesus taught about the ox in the ditch. I realize that. <clears throat> but uh, in, in, this, in this time that we've just gone through the last couple of weeks and this summer of, of just remembering a lot of important events in the history of our country, uh, I, I just wanted to bring to your attention the the important events in the history of our faith, the history of our church, the things, in my opinion, that matter the most. Not that the other things are not important, because they are. I mean, they're very, very important. I mean, you just... But when it's important enough to God to have it written down in this book, it makes me realize that it's important. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So I just want to ask you this question, and I ask the same thing to myself. One of the first things I learned after I graduated from Life Speaker School, is be careful about saying you in a sermon. Don't be pointing no fingers. You need to make sure you include yourself in everything. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So let's ask ourselves. Let's ask ourselves the question. This one commandment we're talking about today, are we doing what God asks us to do. Are we honoring God by using this day as, as a day of rest? Uh, I told the folks at Sunday school this morning that even though when I get in the truck and I drive down Horton Men Road here, I kind of I kind of just give a big exhale. And the only reason that I do is because it's just stressful because even though I've been doing it for 13 years, every Sunday is a new adventure for me. And, and, and the reason that, that I feel a little bit of anxiety and stress is because what we're doing, our time here, it's important. It's very important. It may be one of the most important things that we do all week. Out of the 168 hours that we get for a week, this one hour we spend here in worship. And, and, and I want it to go right. And I'm just prone to reading the wrong words or saying the wrong things. How many times have I wished everybody a happy Father's Day when it was happy Mother's Day? You know, the whole time I'm thinking to myself, don't say Father's Day, don't say Father's Day, say Mother's Day. Happy Father's Day. This is important, what we do here. And, and I also shared this morning that, that, that I, feel, I, I feel so good about our church that as I look around the room right now, I see everyone's eyes. Nobody's asleep. Nobody's looking at their watch. Nobody's fooling with their phones. You're paying attention to the message. And that's the same thing through prayer, through announcements, through the music. So I, I think as far as we're concerned, the hour that we spend in worship or Sunday school or whatever we do, I think we're good, you know. But, but are we honoring God the rest of the Sabbath? And uh, 
I feel good about that answer. Because I, as I look around the room here, I know everybody fairly well. Those of you who I, I don't know as well, I, I hear a lot of good things. So I feel like we're in good shape, but you know, the, the, there's a, a lot of things in the world that go on today I ask you to remember. But let's, let's remember today what God has done for us. You know, if, if I went around the room right now and just asked everybody to share, we might be here till 3 o'clock. If I just asked the question, what, is, what has God done for you? Let's just narrow it lightly. I can tell you what he's done for me lately. When I hurt my knee, I did the same thing Mary Jean did. I was on a walker for two days. Couldn't walk. I was on a cane for two days. And, and I've just been blessed enough where I can stand here today. God, God's helped me in my health and my well-being, and I appreciate that. Now, I could go on a million different things. But what God wants from us is, is obedience. Is obedience to His Word, obedience to His commands, obedience for His desires, for our direction, for, for His direction to our life. So, of all the things that I mentioned here today, it's great, fine, and wonderful to remember all those things. But let's not forget what God has commanded us to do. And one of the things that He commanded us to do, number four, was to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy. Let's bow our heads as musicians come. Dear Heavenly Father, I just ask you to Help us. If there's in any way that we have uh, failed you, help us to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy as we seek to honor you with all that we do. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Pat, what's the song we got? 337. 337 in your red hymn. First and the last.